forensic analysis using autopsy in Kali Linux. We have an appliance we've previously loaded. I'm going to enter the login and password, which is Kali and Kali. And the first thing we're going to do is, is uh, capture our um, disk image to use for analysis. If you did this in a previous solution, chances are pretty good it's not in your folder. This is a forensic uh, version of Kali, which means it doesn't have persistent memory. So if you go into the temp folder, you'll find there's no image there. In any case, we're going to create one, which is uh, relatively easy to do. We're going to use Gaimager as we did before. And the key to this is making sure you have uh, elevated privileges in uh, you use SU. So I'm going to enter sudo su. It's going to give us this static. And we're going to enter the password again and bring up Gaimager. You'll select the uh, simulated attached USB drive, the one gig USB drive, and then right click it to acquire an image. You're going to select the Linux DD raw image and not a, not a proprietary one. And uncheck the box for split image files. We'll use our TMP folder again because it's good for temporary purposes. And the name of the file without extension we're going to enter is capital USB, capital I, lowercase mg, zero one. And uh, we'll go ahead and click start. In a relatively short period of time, capture will be complete. And we'll be able to check on that and see how it is. Um, you'll want to verify the, the hash against uh, previous uh, image captures or, or other images that have been acquired so you're sure you have consistent data. Each time you analyze, you have to do this. So we're going to open our file system, scroll down to temp, and sure enough, we have an image file and image information. If I select this, and open in Vim text editor. I can scroll down and take a look at the MD5 hash. When we compare this MD5 hash with previous acquisition, it max matches completely. To get a screenshot of this, you're going to want to click outside the virtual machine window. So I'm clicking on the desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and hit print screen so I can capture that image. And uh, that's one of the things I'll include in my submission so that I can, I've verified uh, the data remains uncorrupted for the analysis. That'll be important with digital evidence later on if it becomes necessary. Uh, the thing I want you to remember is this path. It's in the slash TMP folder slash USB image IMG 01.dd something we'll need in just a moment. So at this point, we're going to go back to our, uh, we're going to go back to our, our prompt. And uh, we can close Gaimager at this point. Now we have our prompt back. I'm going to enter autopsy while I'm still in privileged mode with a pound prompt. If I don't do that, it won't work. So autopsy is basically a browser view of the autopsy forensic tools. And in order to load it, we have to open this link in a browser. The easiest way to do that is to hover our mouse over it, right click and open the link. And uh, at that point, You'll see autopsy open. We're going to create a new case. And as we did before, we'll use the same convention. So we'll say this is case 2020-01. And we'll say this is 
uh, Sydney Corinth or S Corinth uh, USB um, disk image analysis. You can enter your own first initial and last name. And uh, we'll go ahead and hit new case. Now we do need to add a host, although this is not as critical because this is the the, the uh, this particular artifact, this particular exhibit was was uh, captured as a part of a USB thumb drive. Um, it's not it's not associated with a a specific system. So when we click add host, we're just going to accept the default host name. And make no other changes and just click add host to get past this. Now we're going to add an image, a disk image. So we're going to add our image file by clicking add image file. And here's where we enter the path. So it's slash TMP slash capital USB capital I MG 01.dd. It's a disk capture. We're going to copy this into our evidence folder and click next to continue. We want to calculate the hash to ensure that we have a clean image uh, capture and that uh, autopsy is starting with the same image that we, we just captured. We'll accept the defaults here. You'll notice that USB thumb drive was formatted with an NTFS. That's correct. We'll leave that. And, um, in any case, we're going to click the Add button. And right now it's calculating the MD5 hash. If you notice, while it's generating these other details, it's the exact same hash. This is another screenshot that you would like to capture that shows uh, verification of the data it's uncorrupted so we know that um, we still have good data as, in terms of digital evidence we're going to add this and it's going to mount it on an NTFS C drive so we're going to click OK and it's it's not the raw image that we want to analyze it's the mounted image we want to analyze we're going to click analyze and at this point it's uh, beginning uh, some of the analysis in the background the first thing we'll do is the file analysis so we're going to take a look at the files that are listed and as you scroll down you can tell which ones are files and which ones are directories we have something interesting here bad cluster that tells us that the image we captured is still valid and uncorrupted but there must have been a bad file that was saved on that thumb drive. If we scroll down and look, uh, let's see, we have a directory called source. That's an interesting, uh, you want to take the time to inspect each of these directories and each of the files. As you click on them it'll show you a view of the file. So for example, here's one called board presentation and and so it's got a txt ending so we would think this is a text file. When we click on it, a preview of the contents below are not plain text. That's the first clue that something's going on here. Even though it has a TXT extension, uh, we're seeing some, some gibberish here. Let's display the hexadecimal values. And there we see something interesting. In the header of the hexadecimal values, you'll see these letters XML here and here. XML, that means we're not dealing with a text file. It could be an Office file. A lot of uh, Office files are saved in an XML format. So another thing we can do is uh, click on the next display 
uh, to see ASCII strings. And here we see something. There's the XML again. And whoops, workbook. And further down, sheet. So worksheets, that's more like Excel, if you're familiar with Excel. That's kind of interesting. And the next thing we can do is to take a look at the metadata. So you'll notice in the column on the end, here's metadata and there's a hyperlink. So we're going to click on this and take a look at the metadata. And yes, we see that there's an Excel interest right here. You can take another screenshot here to show that you're viewing the txt file but that there is something going on here so you can highlight this or highlight excel um, and that draws attention to the fact that it, right, it's supposed to be text but no it isn't it's excel and um, we can export the contents and then change the extension to xls or xlsx to see if that opens up in Excel and then view the information plainly. So that's that's one way to uh, analyze further. You'll notice it also generates uh, MD5 and SHA-1 hashes of this particular artifact so that it, we can track its if, if any changes happen to the data as we're analyzing. Um, at this stage, you'd want to take a picture of this. That'll be your third screenshot to submit. And uh, let's return to our file analysis. And I wanted to call your attention in the lower part here to expand directories. This is a useful feature. If you click expand directories, now it opens up the directory tree. And that allows you to see uh, where the relative placement of some of these uh, directories and subdirectories are to each other. Um, Here's an interesting item. Looks like a profile. And looks like a user profile inside the recycle bin. That'll be worth uh, some additional analysis. Inside the source directory, you want to take a look inside the source directory. It's, it's odd that that's not expanded. That's usually the case for a directory that's hidden. So all the other directories that are not hidden or system directories open plainly, but can click inside source and have a look. You can see that there's notes and what do we have here? Notes. That's the root file and then you see the next two listings. My suite and restricted text. This is another screenshot that you want to capture. This shows uh, the plain evidence that uh, alternate data streams has been used to hide data on this USB thumb drive. The fact that the same root file name is repeated with a colon, that's one of the, that's one of the um, execution criteria that is used when you're implementing alternative uh, data streams. And so right there you have the evidence you need. As we did before, we can click on it. And in this case, you see the text file really is a text file. Just a note that says the developer for a fundraising app is Victor Gonzalez. He works at Quick App in Buenos Aires, Argentina. What we should do now is click on this content to see what the hidden data is. Uh, and there's a note about my suite. And you see the word Sweet Amber here. It says, this anonymous act of digital activism is devoted to the next generation, especially for Amber Rose. May you enjoy the penguins with your grandchildren as we have enjoyed them with you. So, so that speaks to motive. Um, that's something you can... Here's another screenshot you should capture. That would be the fourth screenshot. Let's see what restricted.txt says. Ah... Some additional information about Victor Gonzalez. He has another life. He has an alias online called Kingfish with a PH. He could be reached via Buenos Aires Craigslist by that handle. 
He charges five thousand dollars for each exploit of malware created. Oh my goodness! So he's a gun, a digital gun for hire. He's he's a malicious type online. And um, let's see what happens if we click on Amber. Oh yeah, you want to take one last screenshot here. So this would be your fifth and last screenshot. It shows the uh, additional content that you need in order to uh, to make informed decisions about uh, what to do in Sydney Corinth's case. And um, after that, if you wanted to, you could click some more just to see what else is going. Oh, here's a picture of Amber Rose. Oh, yep. We want to make sure the penguins are still alive for her. You see that opened up when you preview and click full screen. It opens up in an additional tab. All right, so that, that concludes the analysis demonstration. You want to be sure that you close the autopsy file analysis properly. And you see there are other, there are other details here, keyword searches. You could search for other uh, other facts that are known for the scenario. Uh, there was something about um, Brazil, a conference in Brazil. You could search, keyword search for Brazil and see what else pops up. Very useful tool, open source, uh, great for digital, uh, uh, digital analysis. All right, so we're going to close this and as we hit the close button, the first thing we want to do is close the host. If we don't close out gracefully, it won't save what we've analyzed in our evidence locker properly. So we're going to close the host, and now we're going to close the case. And uh, at this point, we can close the tab. You'll notice that Autopsy is still running, and it's important to close Autopsy properly, or it won't save everything properly. You're going to want to use Control-C to do this. As it says, keep this process running and use control C to exit. But we're going to use the left control C because the right control C down here is used to signal um, hot keystrokes for the virtual machine and virtual box, not inside this window. So we're gonna press our left control C. That gives us our, our uh, privileged pound prompt back. We can exit out of this and exit out of that and then shut down our Kali virtual appliance. And this concludes our forensics session. Please be sure you post all five screen captures for your submission.